What is up? Welcome back to my channel. I am actually really excited about today's segment and I think you guys will like it too. So I watched Ghost Adventures last weekend. Their new episode was basically going to the Navajo Nation in the Four Corners region and they investigated something called a skinwalker. As much as I loved it and I thought it was a great episode, I felt like the definition of skinwalker wasn't really clear and I didn't know if it was because when they were interviewing, like, I'm not sure if that was the chief they were talking to on the reservation, but he said, you know, well, if they talk to you, but they probably won't because they believe in the skinwalker and the skinwalker will harm them if they tell someone who's non-Indian. So I'm like, what's a skinwalker? And they never got an interview with someone else to explain what a skinwalker was. And I was so confused because I was like, is it a ghost? Is it cryptozoology? Is it both? So lucky for you guys, I have this girlfriend that I met in college here in Vegas and she's actually Navajo Indian. As you guys know, I am Cherokee Indian. I am extremely proud of my heritage. My grandmother was full-blooded Cherokee Indian. She lived on the reservation till she was 18 and then she did leave and go to uh, Chicago for fashion school and she never went back to the reservation. So growing up, my grandmother forced me <laughs> to learn about my heritage, so I am very, very proud of my heritage. So in the meantime, I called up my girlfriend who I will say wants to remain anonymous because they do actually believe in the skinwalkers. So this is strictly Navajo. So my question to her was, the guy Zach interviewed said, you're not Indian so they can't tell you because harm will be done to them. So the question to me was, if I'm Cherokee, I'm technically Indian, um, are you disobeying the tribe by telling someone Navajo only or are you disobeying the tribe by just telling someone that's Native American? So of course before she talked to me she did go um, check and there is no specifics so she did feel comfortable talking to me. She no longer lives on the reservation so maybe that's why she felt safe telling me. <laughs> so anyway I want to tell you guys what I have come to find out what a skinwalker is um, I don't think anyone out there that is Navajo will correct me or disagree with me because they're going to be concerned with something happening to their family. So let me go ahead and kind of tear this apart for you guys, tell you what I've learned. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical in some of these parts um, just because I am a science mind and so I'm going to look at the skeptical side of it and both devil's advocate side. So let's start chatting about what exactly is a skinwalker. So basically what it comes down to is a skinwalker will never be spoke of publicly, especially like probably why Zach didn't get any interviews with any of the people on the Navajo land because they believe that basically if you tell anybody about a skinwalker or the skinwalker, that retribution will you know, become of you and you'll be basically punished by the skinwalker for talking about them. So the reason they believe so firmly in the skinwalkers is when you're on the reservation, they basically believe the skinwalkers could potentially be someone that they know personally. So the skinwalkers can actually transform into beings, sometimes on all fours, sometimes it can be a coyote, sometimes it can be an animal, sometimes it can be a bird, a crow, a hawk. Um, basically they will transform into something other than human and then back into human form. 
So the, the permanent definition of a skinwalker, when you basically get to its core, is considered a witch, okay? So basically they look at anyone that practices witchcraft, a skinwalker. So what they are actually taught at, for the Navajo Nation is when the children come up, you know, they're, they're taught to trust in medicine men and women, and there'll be medicine men and women within the clan or within the you know Navajo Nation in that case. And the concern is sometimes those medicine men and women in the uh, Navajo Nation could actually be a skinwalker. And so, which means they not only will practice healing people, but they also practice in witchcraft or magic. And they basically can't really tell who is who when it comes to you know being a skinwalker. So I'm gonna write this term, and I'm looking at it on my notes, and I, I there's no way I'm gonna even try to butcher it for you guys. I know some Cherokee, but I definitely don't know the Navajo language. But whatever this word is and how you pronounce it, it literally translates to, with it, he goes on all fours, which means probably when Aaron heard the coyotes, that potentially could be a sign of a skinwalker that's near, or you're in the presence of a skinwalker. So back up for just a minute. Now, if you're talking about a medicine man or a medicine woman, a lot of times on the reservations within the Indian tribes, they will teach you know children that are somehow chosen within the uh, Navajo Nation, or in my case, the Cherokee Nation, to become the next uh, medicine man or woman. So it's kind of like how uh, the Buddha, you know, will pick a new Buddha and it will be that who replaces them. Like they'll have some sort of a sign, um, you know, religious based sign that that is the chosen child to be a medicine man or woman. When a skinwalker is basically created, it's when that skinwalker has created or maintained the highest level of, um, I want to say like, superiority or uh, priesthood or whatever you know religious term you want to use they have attuned to the highest level that they can practice at and they are that good at basically being able to heal members of the tribe so when this person attunes to their power it actually ends up turning evil so they basically realize how powerful of a healer they are in that term right in that terminology would be um, you know, a healer to the tribe and to the people of the tribe. And they use that power for evil when they realize how good they have become at practicing not just medicine, but, but being a healer of holy hands, basically. So basically they take their, I, I don't want to say power, because if you meet medicine men and women like I have even through my tribe, um, they don't like to feel powerful. They they are healers. They are they kind of God of whatever religious base you want to say. But they're saying in the Navajo Nation that this skinwalker will take this power, and they will use it to harm people and animals or anything that basically steps in their way. They'll use it for harm. When you've actually become a skinwalker in the Navajo Nation or language or legends, whatever you want to use. Basically, in order to attune to the evil side after you've become highest of priesthood, you have to kill, physically kill one of your family members in order to attune to that um, level of evilness, I guess, if you want to use that terminology. A skinwalker's definition is a human with superhuman powers who can morph into animals. It's also claimed that some skinwalkers can transform into other people. So kind of like turn into a doppelganger of someone else so that they, they're tricky, they're tri tricksters, I guess. So what did scare me about you know going into this discussion of killing a family member was when Zach had brought up to the tribe leader, can you tell me about this woman that killed this man um, because she claimed he was a skinwalker? And the tribe leader said something like, I can't talk about that. You also have to remember that um, with Cherokee Nation or Navajo Nation or Blackfoot, any of the other nations, they basically govern themselves on the reservations. 
So that's why he says he can't talk about it because they are their own government within their own Native American heritage or lineage, okay? But I was really creeped out when he said this woman killed her husband because he was supposedly practicing witchcraft. Was that the case or is she the skinwalker that decided to kill her husband in the name of practicing witchcraft and she had to lie um, to cover up the murder because that's of the highest evil attunement, right? Which is killing her husband, which is murdering someone makes you become the ultimate evil of Skinwalker. So anyways, that's just some food for thought throwing it out at you guys. So according to Navajo Nation, they are typically and usually seen in the form of a coyote. So actually Navajo Nation people sometimes are in fear of coyotes, not just because they're coyotes, but because that could potentially be a skinwalker crossing your path. It can also come in the form of an owl, a fox, or even a wolf or a crow. Actually, I believe a crow is the next big thing that it can be um, considered to be in your presence is in the shape of a crow. The legend also says that skinwalkers will wear the skins of the animals um, so basically they're sacrificing these animals in order to turn into them when they shapeshift. So basically the reason this is a really big red flag to the Navajo Nation is because they kind of forbid the Navajo Nation to wear any sort of animal pelts. They do use um, sheepskin hides and buckskin hides and that is only for like Native American ceremonial purposes. So basically, if you see someone that maybe killed a bunch of crows and has like a crow cape or someone that killed some coyotes and has some coyote pelts, that is another sign that that person could potentially be a skinwalker. By the way, I don't believe you absolutely have to have, you know, be a medicine man. Um, you could also have tried to attempt to train yourself as a medicine man in secret. But the trickster part is the person that is treating you as the medicine man could potentially also be a skinwalker. So I think that is where the fear comes in with the Navajo Nation, and that's why they won't speak out, because they need the medicine man or woman on the tribe on the reservation in order to be treated for illness and sickness. So if that person finds out that they spoke out against them and called them a skinwalker or told someone about the skinwalkers, uh, potentially while they're trying to heal you, whether it's through herbs or singing or you know any of the magical processes that go through being a medicine man, that person could potentially put a curse on you. So that is why I believe it is so hush-hush when the Navajo Nation was on set with Ghost Adventures talking about what a skinwalker is. So they do say that um, when a skinwalker is near, you'll hear like knocks on the window, bangs on the wall, um, knocks on the door, um, and basically they can do you physical harm immediately. They can make you freeze, they can make you forget, they can make you paralyzed, and they can actually potentially kill you in an instant. Um, I'm not really sure how. They also claim that they can see animal, um, I guess, reflections through mirrors, animal reflections through windows, and when that is peering and watching at you, that is when you can anticipate to have some sort of harm done by a skinwalker. So there are actual trackers of skinwalkers. They try to weed them out, which I'm assuming what, that's what that guy was that you guys saw with the giant gun. So in order to confront a skinwalker, a skinwalker tracker has to pronounce their full name in the name of evil. And then once this happens, um, the divine will come down and basically uh, kill the skinwalker or make it get very sick and ill and it will die eventually. So what's an easier way for you guys to kind of compare the skinwalker? I have two examples for you. So obviously we know of the witch hangings in Salem, Massachusetts in like the 1600s. The Navajo Nation compares the skinwalker to what the Salem Mass witches would have been like and the Navajo Nation also compares the skinwalker to uh, what a banshee would be like to people in Mexico City. So another thing that I found interesting about the skinwalkers is when you guys saw the medicine woman that was there, she was singing. So um, the Navajo Nation believe that singing is what can heal or protect people when they're sick or ill or like she was calling them warriors. 
the Navajo Nation believes anything in the name of witchcraft is pure evil, um, in curses, really bad. They just believe that witches in general, the name, t the term witch, the, the study of witchcraft is associated with harm and death and usually it's related to, you know, causing your family to die, get sick and die. So what I do find interesting with that being said, if we're going to compare Skinwalker to witchcraft like Salem, Massachusetts, if you get technical and you look back at the 1600s in Salem, Mass, some of the witches witches, if they were real or not, some of us have, you know, done research and determined some people were wrongly accused of witchcraft. If you look at the witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts, some of the witches were actually hung for communicating with the dead or the afterlife. So I'm not sure if that meant they were ghost hunting. I doubt it back then, but, or if they were psychic, if they were communicating psychically. So if you're comparing the skinwalker once again, this is my uh, devil's advocate self talking. If you're comparing the Skinwalker and Navajo Nation to Salem Mass witchcraft, why were all of the people of the Navajo Nation so excited to see ghost adventures? Obviously, they watch ghost adventures, right? Because technically, ghost hunting is communicating with the dead, and technically, that is a form of witchcraft. My question is, how come the skinwalker is so feared if Navajo Nation is completely against witchcraft when all of them knew what ghost adventures was, however, ghost adventures and ghost hunting is technically considered witchcraft? Food for thought. Food for thought. So basically, one of the ways or the main way that the Navajo Nation believes that the skinwalker will curse or kill you or a family member if you discuss the skinwalkers is by something that is literally called corpse powder. So oddly, as strange as it sounds, it's exactly what it is. So basically they believe these skinwalkers will either be in on the process of, um, I, I wanna say mummification, but it's, it's not that obviously, it would be cremation, or they perhaps go to graves of people after they've died and they will actually gather powder from the cremation process or from the remains of the dead loved one. They will use this corpse powder and hold it, um, probably in some sort of like an alchemy manner is what I'm imagining. And if someone upsets them, um, like, you know, that is of, you know, that talks about a skinwalker for, the, for that matter, they will go to another family member of theirs and they will um, sprinkle the corpse powder on this person, they will blow it in their face, uh, they'll pretend to do a spell, um, black, kind of like black magic is what it sounds like, or hoodoo voodoo, something like that. And usually, or through legend for the Navajo Nation, your family member will die or someone that you know will die because you basically went against Navajo rules by discussing a skinwalker. So now what's in the corpse powder is my question, right? If it's gonna be sprinkled on someone or blown in their face and they breathe it in, it may not just be corpse powder or you know bone dust. It could be mixed in with some sort of a chemical for all we know, right? Like we don't really know what could happen um, you know, if, if someone's blowing this in their face and they die, what, what chemical component was made up of that corpse powder? Now here's another thing with the nations, and I know this just because of the Cherokee Nation, which I'm involved in. Sometimes people on the reservation believe in modern medicine, sometimes they don't. Once again, the reservations make up their own government, their own rule of government, basically. If these people are dying from corpse powder being sprinkled on them, or their family member, or whatever, if they're not getting like a proper, uh, you know, go to the morgue um, and then in the local county that they're closest to other than the reservation, and if they're not using modern medicine to determine, you know, some sort of a toxicology report, what was in that corpse powder that they breathed in that caused them to die, how do they know it's just corpse powder? You don't really know. And that's really, once again, up to the discretion of the Navajo Nation. Like I said, sometimes they use modern medicine, like some of the natives will go to see modern doctors, and sometimes they will stick totally to their guns as far as um, you know ancient medicine, and they will strictly only see the medicine man and medicine woman. 
and um, you know you can't do a toxicology obviously if there isn't modern medicine involved so to be perfectly honest playing devil's advocate you don't know what those persons or people died of if something was blown in their face or if they were injected or yeah maybe somebody did some crazy spell on them but did they did they inject them with something were they you know did they ingest something and you don't know without toxicology being all fair. They do claim in the Navajo Nation, once this corpse uh, powder is sprayed on them, there is immediate action taken with it. So you will immediately die or your family member will immediate, immediately die after it's sprinkled on you, around you, or towards you. They say it's like immediate administration of poison. There's fainting involved, swelling of the tongue, or even lockjaw. It's also claimed that victims you know, that have been affected by the skinwalker will just literally waste away. But once again, you have to consider modern medicine. Is modern medicine being involved? Are they being taken to the local emergency room to make sure that they haven't been poisoned by something else? I do think it was hilarious. The medicine woman gave them something called devil's weed. I'm just reading it right now. It says it's a um, common's name is devil's snare. It's a plant of basically the deadly nightshade family. It's believed to have originated in Mexico, but it's now in many regions of the United States. And um, the Navajo believe that it could be like a protective healing agent when it's ingested. Once again, this is one of the old practices of the medicine man, medicine woman of the nations. So the Navajos are basically completely against witchcraft, except I don't understand why they're in support of ghost adventures when technically that's a little tiny piece of witchcraft. I'm just being bluntly honest with you guys. I have nothing against the Navajo Nation, understand that. Since I am Native American and I am Cherokee, understand this is not a finger pointing against just at the Navajo Nation. I've questioned things from my Cherokee heritage as well. This is just me also playing scientist, playing devil's advocate, working in the paranormal. So this has nothing to do with the Navajo Nation. I have the utmost respect for all Na you know, Native Americans, because I am Cherokee. I am very proud of it. And I'm also proud to say that I have a wonderful friend in the Navajo Nation. So Navajo, you know, religious based is basically uh, peace and harmony, uh, balance of, of life and, and culture, uh, home life, basically. The Navajo Nation doesn't classify people like um, lower class, middle class, upper class. They class people of holy spectrum and of the earth and that's it because most of the Navajo Nation they will own lots of land with livestock so I have to say after I watched it I thought it was so creepy that Aaron got the coyotes multiple times I thought that was fabulous obviously there's some sort of witchcraft going on I don't know if I'm the biggest believer in shape-shifting although I'll say I've seen some really crazy things so that wouldn't shock me um, I've never actually seen it with my eyes I did think that it was really scary in that cave I've been to outdoor areas where I've investigated and it's really hard because not only do you have to focus on filming and ghost hunting and, and gathering evidence but now you're against the elements and that sucks I am not the biggest fan of outdoor investigations. I will say please take Zach's advice if you ever do ghost hunt out in the dark, out at night in weird canyons and caves. It can be very hazardous and dangerous, so please make sure that you're safe if you do it. I will say that Zach and the guys on Devil's Weed or whatever that was, Oh my god, that was hilarious. I, I laughed and replayed it and replayed it so many times because I, I just couldn't see it enough. I thought it was so funny. I wish they had a little bit more humor in their shows sometimes because I feel like that's one thing I really love about Josh Gates is that he's able to balance the show and host work with investigating with really awesome historical facts and he's also freaking hilarious. So, so what do you guys think about the Skinwalkers? Do you think they're real? What did you guys think about Ghost Adventures evidence? What did you think about the whole thing? The only thing I wasn't uncertain of was, you know, not being clear on what a skinwalker was. But now I'm, now I'm aware of what it is. You know, understand that Native Americans have many legends. Uh, my, you know, tribe has many legends as well. So this isn't shocking to hear of, you know, Native people having these um, kind of crypto characters of witchcraft that they, they truly believe in. And 
they're so afraid of them is because they believe that they are aware and they live among them. And obviously, they went back up to the cave. Someone had been up there and done some sort of a strange ritual, which I thought was terrifying. I love to hear your feedback. Please tell me what you guys thought about Ghost Adventures. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time. Hell